Dan Dyker coming off yet another big weekend of short track racing here in Western Wisconsin. Had a great night at Mississippi Thunder Speedway last Friday night. They've got a not only a big show coming up this Friday night, but the stage is set for a $20,000 to win show coming up in September. We're gonna talk about that when we highlight the MTS results coming up later on in the program. We're gonna recap the Lacrosse Fairground Speedway here in a second. Just a reminder, I won't be here next week. The show will be here, but I won't be here. Somebody else will be filling in to give you all the highlights and the great news of short track racing. I uh, get the luxury of going to cover Green Bay Packers training camp for four days next week. So I'll try to send you some selfies if I get a chance. Let's go to the Cross Fairground Speedway. It was a great night of racing last Saturday night. Uh, the humidity, a little bit hot and some of the racing on the track was even a little bit hotter. And one of the hottest drivers at the Lacrosse Speedway is BP Brad Powell. Let's get to the uh, Lacrosse Late Model NASCAR last two of this one right here. And I'll tell you what, by the time this race was done, Brad Powell had shown that that little dip he took earlier in the season is now well behind him. And he's within the earshot of catching Steve Carlson atop the point standings. BP Brad Powell takes home the win on this Saturday night with some very interesting drivers running up front. Uh, Ty Majeski, Matt Henderson, Brent Kirshner, the Honey Badger, returned to the Lacrosse Fairground Speedway last weekend. And Steve Carlson all found themselves in the top five. Carlson got sent to the back of this one and had to make his way all the way through the field to, to finish in the fifth order. And of course, uh, by the time the checkered flag had flown, now just not too much track space was left. Uh, left for Steve Carlson, but another great run for Brad Powell, Ty Majeski, Matt Henderson, first time he's had a top three in quite a while. To the uh, Sportsman feature we go, and two cars in this one just really made this uh, breakaway race. You've got the Kachow number eight and the Clements, the number 14 of Steve Bachman. And that was pretty much it. Once these two had cleared the field, they had about a quarter track lead over the rest of the field. Bachman just not enough laps left to catch the number eight car right there. You see of a Nick Clements. Clements, what a night he had uh, on this Saturday night. This was his fifth feature race win of the year. He loves the new rule package. Says, hey, if other drivers are gonna wanna get up to where I am, they gotta work on it. That's pretty much plain and simple to go along. With win number five, Clements also picked up his seventh fast time qualifier of the year, which of course got him back into the six for six dash. So as the new lacrosse speedway chase continues for the late models and sportsmen, pretty much safe to say that uh, Nick Clements and uh, Steve Bachman will find themselves one of the maybe two to six drivers remaining at Oktoberfest with a brand new chase, brand new points, a huge trophy, and it's gonna be interesting to see where those two end up as we get closer to uh, fest time. To the uh, lacrosse thunderstocks we go, a lot of bumping and banging was going on in this one right here. Uh, we all we saw the 28 of uh, Scott Malum get into it with Andy Moore midway through the race. Black flag came out and that pretty much uh, was the end of the night for the 28. But to Charles Vian Jr. Uh, now has a six point lead over Andy Moore in what's become a very interesting and exciting Thunderstock uh, feature and points race this year. White flag flies, that's Tom Farah out of Sparta trying to give uh, Charles Vian Jr. everything he could. They went side by side several times over the last three laps. Kayla Ray Lockington was in tow back there, got the best seat in the house watching what's evolving in front of her. But in the end, here comes the last dash on the accelerators. Checker flag flew, and it was that close for Charles Vian Jr. picking up win number two of the year. Again, as a six-point lead over uh, Andy Moore in the Thunderstock point standings. Uh, Tom Farah, Kayla Ray Lockington, Andy Moore, Caleb Hardy rounded up the top five in what was a uh, fun race to call for the Thunderstocks. Another fun one right here. This was the Hornets, and two cars took this one all the way down to the start finish line. Uh, green flag went out pretty quickly. Mark Lethe and Travis Lee uh, all uh, simultaneously got into a bad wreck in turn three. They both walked away okay, but not the same story for their cars. In the end right here, you see the 66 of Kim Strom. You see the th uh, zero 03 of Jeff Thompson. And then you see the 50 of Mark Lethe. Now here's the white flag. Kim Strom has what you would think is a pretty decent lead across the stripe. 
Well, there's a lot of lap traffic right here. Tom Lethe takes advantage. Strom has to get uh, Malum out of the way. And these two around Stanfield are going to take a last mash effort right here at the stripe. And right like that, lap traffic played in. And uh, Tom Lethe picked up the feature race win. Kim Strom had to set up for second. Jeff Thompson rounded out the top three. We're going to feature in our next segment today a, uh, a huge race we had all across this past weekend. The vintage cars were back out. Usually you don't see them until Oktoberfest. They had 16, which is outstanding if you're a vintage race follower. We're going to show you the last couple of laps of that race as well. We've also got uh, that coming up in the next segment. Really got to congratulate Kenny Hutchins and Ken Lewis uh, and the Rossiers and, and all the other guys that came out. They made that a fantastic night for those vintage guys. Uh, matter of fact, one of the cars that was out there was a former CWA RA president, and he had a Mark Martin car from the Talladega Super Speedway. Yes, it was all intact, a lot of horsepower, and well, he really couldn't find out how to make that thing work for him. But it was interesting to see uh, Johnny Gilbertson and all these different drivers that have competed in racing for 30, 40, 50, 60 years uh, come back out in vintage style cars at the Lacrosse Speedway. And when we come back, we're going to show you the last laps of that feature event, which was simply outstanding. It was Ross here versus Ross here, brother versus brother towards the end of this one. Matter of fact, one of the uh, heat races came down to that as well. And uh, that'll set the stage for the uh, 5 8 Smile action coming up during Oktoberfest race weekend. So coming up next, we're going to show you the vintage feature from Lacrosse Fairground Speedway right here on several of his racing. Get ready for the Thunder. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Your Friday night racing destination. Every Friday night. Super Stocks, Modified. 600 Mods. Pure Stocks, Street Stocks, B Mods. It's racing excitement, dirt track style. Tickets $12 for adults, $10 for seniors. Students free with an ID. And this year, kids 17 and under free with an adult admission. Friday night racing starts at 7. Bring on the Thunder. Dirt track style at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Highway 35 just north of Fountain City. Some of the best moments in life happen at home. American Standard Heating and Air works smarter to make them all more comfortable. Over $400 in rebates available on select American Standard systems. Call Cary Heating and Air Conditioning today for a free estimate. Soccer to me of Tim Evanson made his way out. He'll pick up the back of the field. Gilbertson races out to a 10 car advantage in the early going with a lot of heat coming behind him. Just listen to that sound, OJ. Hey, Ken Lewis in that number seven Hooters Mustang was a regular sportsman driver here for many years, so he knows this racetrack. Look at the brothers Rossier running one and four. Here we go. <laughs> Told you, race fans, I was watching Rex Rossier in the 21 during the uh, hot laps tonight. He was awfully fast, but Haney's going to catch up to him in the five car on the outside rail in a turn four. <laughs> Haney will overtake Rossier down the back straightaway. He's on the outside. Rossier can still keep his nose on the inside. Awfully tight they are. Rex Rossier is right behind his brother in the four car. The Nova. <laughs> Kenny Hutchins, who represents the website LostSpeedway.com, is in the Harry Gant 33. He comes out of Black River Falls, has a whole garage full of vintage cars. Love that guy. So again, the battle for the top spot is Rex Ross here in the 21. And the five car, who is Pat Haney. 
Right behind is Hutchins and Royce Ross here in the four. Those guys are moving, I tell you what, I love this. I wouldn't have a problem running vintage races every night here at the Speedway. The uh, Socket Jimmy number two car, the Buick Tim Evanson, slowing down to the corners of three and four. He's out of harm's way. And he's still on a half car advantage on the outside. And here we go, down the front straightaway. Gilbertson spins the heavy Chevy sideways, and here comes the wheel and caution period. So this ought to be an interesting restart with the brothers Rossier running one and four. So we'll find out the official way we're gonna restart the vintage cars. Again, brought to you by some fine folks, Riverside Auto and Toy Box Rides. Tammy and Mike Zindrick. Single file restart. We've been notified here in the announcer tower. You picked out your favorite vintage car yet? What do you think, Jeff Brown from the Lacrosse Tribune? Which one of those is your favorite vintage car? Uh, we're going to get the pretzel gone first, though. Sorry about that, Jeff. Just a surprise interview. Find a full recap tomorrow morning in the Lacrosse Tribune, by the way. Jeff Brown does a great job of running. Someone let Jeff survey the field. He's been to Oktoberfest. He's seen some of these drivers out here before. All right, so you've surveyed the field. Which one is your? Which one do you like, Jeff? Pace track's awfully fast tonight, and corners well. So I'm, I'm kind of sticking with that. But no, I like the Camaro. I don't know who's in it, but oh, he's got a, it's Firebird or Camaro. One of the two. It looks great. It looks it's a uh, it's old Z28, and that is the uh, 21. That's one of the uh, Rossier brothers, and uh, that would be Rex Rossier. Here comes the green. We're back to racing. And we're back to the battle of Ross here in Haney one more time. And the race lead goes back to Rex Ross here in the 21 car. And he's trying to check out away from the field. He's got a Haney back to second. Third is Royce Ross here. Kenny Hutchins in the 33. Here comes Johnny's Hobbies Gilbert's in the 12. The Ross here brothers running one and three currently. Rex in the 21. Royce in the four car with a Haney right in the field. Johnny Gilbertson taking advantage of the restart as he'll keep his car in the number four position. In the five spot is Kenny Hutchins. The number two took a tumble off the restart. Number three. The sound of some of these old vintage race cars. I tell you what, music to our ears here on the Cross Speedway. Got a couple of lap cars that might be making things interesting. Under the flag stand, three to go as he starts to stretch out that lead. Haney's still in second, Rossier third. 
Gilbert's in fourth and Hutchins in the top five. Two to go as the two rear end cars were side by side. They were separating, making way for the race leaders. As they pedal him down the front straightaway, white flag will fly for the 21 car of Rex Rossier. Two left turns in the front straight remain. Checkered flags will fly. Hopefully not the last time for these drivers. Your vintage race winner, Rex Rossier. Get ready for the thunder. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Your Friday night racing destination. Every Friday night. Super stocks, modified. 600 mods. Pure stocks, street stocks, B mods. It's racing excitement, dirt track style. Tickets $12 for adults, 10 for seniors. Students free with an ID. And this year, kids 17 and under free with an adult admission. Friday night racing starts at 7. Bring on the thunder. Dirt track style at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Highway 35 just north of Fountain City. Some of the best moments in life happen at home. American Standard Heating and Air works smarter to make them all more comfortable. Over $400 in rebates available on select American Standard systems. Call Cary Heating and Air Conditioning today for a free estimate. Welcome back. Settle this racing team from GTV. I'm Dan Dyke. I want to thank all those vintage guys again that came back out. Uh, it was a great time and a fun time calling that race. Just a reminder, coming up Saturday night, Lacrosse Fairground Speedway, late models, sportsmen, thunder stocks, street stocks, and the world famous trailer race of destruction. If you like seeing things get destroyed in the racetrack, you need to be at Lacrosse Speedway, qualifying at 6.15 and the racing underway at 7.30. To the dirt track we go up in Fountain City, Mississippi Thunder Speedway had a great night. I gave away so many prizes that I still had a box left over. 45 minutes, I was in the grandstands. Want to thank a fast all for supporting the races. Let's get to the highlights. It's the USRA Modifieds up first. There was a $20,000 to win race at Deer Creek Speedway, so we had a smaller AMOD car count tonight, but it really didn't matter. Brad Wade stayed around. He didn't go for the 20 grand. He wanted to keep going at Mississippi Thunder Speedway, and he got yet another USRA modified feature win to add to his points lead atop of the standings. Only driver with an earshot of the 24 that we've seen over and over and over was the uh, the track owner, Bob Tim's son, Jake Tim, and 2009 MTS track champion, John Daly. Well, they finished second and third behind that flat black 24 of Brad Waits, and uh, from here until the end of the season, until they have their fall fest, that's going to be the man with the bullseye in his back, is going to be Brad Waits. To the B-Mods we go, the cliche, nice guys finish last. Well, that was put to shame Friday night. Casey Knudsen brought the crown of the Grand Sands to their feet as he picked up his first ever US RAB modified feature race win. And that was one happy camper down there. The young man brought soda pop up that he sponsored by and to me and the Dan Bailey up in the tower. And uh, it was great to see the 12K of Casey New Knudsen. You might remember the name, folks. When I first moved here in 05, I announced the Cooley Go-Kart Raceway. He was there running a go-kart, so I've known him almost 10 years now. He uh, got by uh, Alex Williamson, especially off of a really uh, quick restart um, early in this race. Uh, ben Modry continued his second, uh, his strong showing at MTS, worked his way through the field from an inside fifth row starting spot. He finishes third. Then it was lucky John Van Minsel and current points leader Parker Hill for fourth. So again, congratulations goes out to Casey Knudsen. To the limited late model class we go. After several weeks settling for feature finishing positions, Lance Holfer in the 11 found his way back to the top part of this race. You'll see, uh, well, here was no denying Lance Holfer. He's had second and third place finishes for about four and five weeks in a row. Once he caught himself up front in this 20-lap race, uh, there was no looking back. He was just gone. Uh, it was a great race for uh, Lance Holfer, the current uh, point leader. 
Tom Brink dropped two additional positions, rolling beneath the checkered flag with a fourth place finish behind Ryan Conkle, who was second. Bob Ford collected his best feature finish of the year. He ended up in third, of course. Bob Ford is spending some time on the cross speedway in a sportsman this year. To the Wasota Super Stocks we go. And I tell you what, seven shows prior to this one, we could just dig the segments out of Tommy Richards and just replay them. He picked up win number eight on the 2015 race season. This man has done it from the back of the pack. He started second from last. He's been buried deep in the field in a 20 car field, and he's done it from the pole. Eight times this year, Tommy Richards uh, has won the Wasota Superstock feature win. And again, he did start, I think on the outside of row five in this one. For uh, Tommy Richards, he races different tracks as well, like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday circuit. Uh, last count, he had 17 feature wins this year and about 20 top five finishes. So this guy, you talk about being on a rail. Uh, that's one of the toughest ones around any dirt track in the uh, tri-state region of Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin. Hard, hard to beat. Congratulations again to Tommy Richards. To the uh, sports when we go, a couple of weeks ago, we showed you the grocery getter. That would be the only station wagon running on dirt, pretty much in a three-state radius. And that would be Derek Sutton. Man, the competition here was simply outstanding from the beginning to the end. He battled five-time feature winner Jordan Becker and heat race winner Jeremy Oaks to claim his third sportsman feature of 2015. Uh, Becker and Oaks finished second and third, respectively, just ahead of Lee Hager and Greg Lammers, who completed the top five. Uh, again, Becker had won five straight races, and he did what he could to try to shake down the uh, grocery getter of Derek Sutton. You see how close they were as they headed down to the back straightaway. Becker tried to make it uh, one last dash right here. We'll just let you watch the rest of this. Sutton went a little bit high. Becker tried to make it stick, and by about a half car length, Derek Sutton takes home his third feature race win. One more at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. The uh, Hornets, we talked about drivers that have dominated, like Tommy Richards picked up his eighth feature win of the year. How about Johnny Sievertson? He did it again uh, Friday night at MTS, picked up his eighth straight feature win, and uh, he's going for a record now. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway uh, record holder for most feature wins in a single season is Johnny Sievertson. It's 11. He showed once again that he's on pace to replicate or even surpass his 11 win racing uh, record. If he can just pick up a couple more with about five races to go. Mark Bordens finished behind Sievertson in second. Larry Hollitz brought home his best feature win of the year. He finished third. And for Mark Bordens, had a couple of chances here, but turn two for some reason just was not playing favorable to that to Ford Probe. And you see right there at the line, Sievertson tops. Uh, born it's by about three car lengths. Coming up uh, Friday night, Mississippi Thunder Speedway. It is the 1,000 down to the win Bayman Law B Mod Challenge. We expect a lot of B Mods from the three uh, state area of uh, Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin here to show up. And we found out earlier this week that the three day B Mod Nationals, I think it's going to be the fourth or fifth year we've had those at MTS. It's coming up the first Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of September. Uh, it's usually the $100,000 weekend. That's what the total payouts are for everybody racing. Between 150 and even 250 B mods are expected to show up. This year, it is a $20,000 to win B mod race. Part of the Nationals on that Saturday night. You know someone that has a B mod, get a hold of them, get them up to Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Check out the website, MississippiThunder.com for more information and uh, get your site sets on a $20,000 to win a race. Some of the biggest names in B mod racing from Texas to Washington, California, East Coast, they're gonna be right here in Fountain City that very first weekend of September. When we come back, we're going to show you more of Tommy Richards' dominance of the MTS Third Mile Dirt Track in Fountain City as our Wissota Super Stock features coming up right around the corner on Mississippi Thunder, Seven Rivers Racing. Get ready for the Thunder. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Your Friday night racing destination. Every Friday night. Super Stocks, Modified. 600 Mods. Pure Stocks, Street Stocks, B-Mods. It's racing excitement, dirt track stock. Tickets $12 for adults, 10 for seniors. Students free with an ID. And this year, kids 17 and under free with an adult admission. Friday night racing starts at 7. Bring on the Thunder. Dirt track style at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Highway 35 just north of Fountain City. Some of 
the best moments in life happen at home. American Standard Heating and Air works smarter to make them all more comfortable. Over $400 in rebates available on select American Standard systems. Call Cary Heating and Air Conditioning today for a free estimate. Nasalki, Brower, Dulman, Sanders back up into the top five of the 41 as Arikio and Plank now battle tire to tire into turn number three under the quick trip billboard. Richards stretching the advantage now up to three car lengths as Nasalki, Dulman, and Brower duke it out in the three car duel for second, third, and fourth. Look at that happy group of Winona FFAers down there, Dan Bailey. $584 they get to take home to support FFA. They're getting their photos taken, big smiles on their faces. Well done job, you guys. Well, see how they throw Mary in and says there's $1,000 standing on there you and I have no part of. <laughs> Cross flags are out for uh, Tommy Richards and the rest of the field. They are halfway through this 20 lap feature and that three car battle for scraps rages on. That's a duel for second, third, and fourth as Richards has now almost an entire straightaway advantage. You know, we know Johnny Sievertson's trying to break his own record of 11 feature wins in one season. We gotta find out what the record is for super stock wins in a season. It's interesting because both Sievertson and Richards have the same number of wins now. Eight wins, well, if Richards collects this one, I should say. <laughs> Can't put the cart before the horse, right? So Brower goes to the far high. Oh, around goes Kevin Hager at one and two with a quick loop with a 94 machine, and that will bring the caution out. Now that's something that Richards did not want to see. 
This four-car jumble behind them, that's exactly what they wanted to see. They're going to have one more last-ditch attempt to try to catch Richards in the seven-arm. As the green comes out, super stock feature back underway with 13 down. went around on his own, but the nose of his 37 got up against that tractor tire, and the car literally couldn't clear the racing surface. Duffy had nowhere to go, and I believe that's the 98 of uh, McEtherin that also just barely got into that one. Nasalki trying to get a quick start, but uh, Richards just puts that power to the ground and quickly establishes a one-car length advantage over the two cars behind him. That was for a moment there, he was bringing Jeff Brower with him. They looked like they were almost chained together heading out of turns one and two. Obviously some damage to the uh, front end of Duffy's 47 as his car is not working and right to the tail end, he drops like a stone. Yeah, that nose is uh, really, really crumpled. Look at his front tires just bobbing and weaving all over the place. Makes you wonder if they uh, if he maybe got some damage to the, uh, oh, look out, J.R. Tortolot goes around in turn number four. He stays under power, and we uh, thought we were going to stay green, but now the caution comes out as he couldn't quite get the 35 spun all the way around, so we have to slow him down. Green flag is out. Back to speed we go with an early challenge from Nasulki. Can he make something happen? He's going to have to be on eight. There's no tomorrow to try to stay door to door with the 7R of Richards with the closing laps about us. And Richards now with a two car length advantage back down the bottom with the 7R he goes. Brower and the Sulky nose to tail but running separate lines. We could have a door to door battle here for seconds. And still watching Jeff Brower running this high line. He seems like he's getting a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker with two to go. Let's see what he's got left. Brandon Dolman right behind him in the zero machine running fourth with Lucas playing in the 71 holding on to the number five spot. White flag is out this time for the 7R of Tommy Richards. One more lap to go. Richards is ready to collect the win, but who's going to take the number two spot? The Sulky on the inside. Richards takes the win. Brower on the outside. Who's got second in the line? Dan the Sulky across the line for a second place finish. Well, that'll do it for this week's program. Of course, the trailer race of destruction coming up Saturday night, Lacrosse Fairgrounds Speedway. We'll have those highlights coming up next weekend with cameras both on the front straight and in turn one. You're going to see all that demolishing action on the action track quarter mile. We'll also have a great recap of the $1,000 to win BMOD special coming up at MTS. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. I won't. I'll be at Packers training camp. Somebody will be here, and they'll be behind the camera right here on KQEG-TV.